Also at the big event was Alicia Overby, the founder of Baby Elephant Ears. We're going to talk about this a bit more. She's designed and made a special headrest for babies. And she was also named Exporter of the Year by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, Alicia, welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. Um, first of all, congratulations on Thank getting you. on getting the award. Um, let me first introduce your your product that you created, right? Your Exporter of the Year. What did you invent? Well, basically, I invented baby elephant ears, and it's a really simple invention. It's just an infant head support pillow, but it solves a huge problem. Which is? When the baby is in any kind of a stroller, car seat, bouncy swing, their heads are all over the place. And that's not only being a discomfort to them, but it also doesn't allow their spine to gain the muscles that it needs to hold itself upright. So what baby elephant ears does is it comforts them and keeps their head and neck aligned properly. We might need some of those here, here in the office yeah. for us. Um, again, again, congratulations. Now, the Small Business Administration in the US, for our audience that doesn't know, it basically encourages business owners, whether you're male or female, it, there's no discrimination. They just want individuals to start a business. Tell me how that had an impact on, on your business startup. It actually had a huge impact. In the beginning, I wasn't really aware of the SBA until a friend introduced me. And once they did, it really changed the game for my business. They introduced me to services such as the counseling, um, the free counseling services they offer, as well as um, the international partner searches, which really jump-started us into the exporting business. Two out of three jobs in America are created by small businesses. You, in particular, is, is unique because you're exporting a product uh, that is made and designed here. Did you have experience with this before, and was it difficult to learn how to export to different, different countries? Because I would imagine that's a huge challenge for someone who isn't an expert at that. It is a huge challenge, and no, I had no previous experience. Basically, we started exporting before I even knew what exporting was. Um, we were shipping shipments to Canada and other near countries, and it wasn't until we started exporting larger quantities to other further countries, such as Japan and Korea, that we even realized that we were exporters. Jessica and I were, were, were talking earlier, you may have heard, that it's pretty cool and pretty amazing that Janet Yellen is speaking to sort of the average small business owner, and, and as one yourself, what does it mean to you? It, it had actually a really big impact on myself sitting there thinking about the magnitude of what she was saying. Um, one of the things she talked about was how the Federal Reserve supports job creation, and yet it's the small businesses who are really creating those jobs. So in essence, the Federal Reserve is there for us, and that made a big yeah. impact. And, and you know, everyone's to blame because a lot of times big media outlets, we focus on what the Fed says, yeah. says and what the impact is to banks and in the greater economy. We forget that when we talk about the economy, it's really talking about people like you. The low interest rates, let me first start by saying how much of an impact did the low rates have on your business? Um, you know, honestly, we didn't notice a huge impact. And, and that's, I think, just due to the size of our business and the industry that we're in, the juvenile product space, didn't experience a huge impact. Now, if rates were to go up in the future, as some are expecting, do you think that would encourage or discourage or have no impact to people who are thinking about starting their own business? You know, I'm not honestly sure. I don't think it would have a huge impact. You look at how, how people were continuing to start small businesses, even through the recession, even through that deepest, darkest time. So I'm not positive that interest rates would really change that desire and that entrepreneurial spirit that much. Now, when we think about exporting, you've gotten a lot of advice, I'm sure, from lawyers and <laughs> friends alike, right? T to me, what was the biggest challenge you had to overcome to get from just being a small, tiny business to really being something that's much more sustainable? It's really that growth curve. Because when that big hit of that opportunity to export large quantities came, we had to learn now how to do it and how to do it properly. Because there are many rules and regulations that apply even to a very small business exporting a very simple product. Now, there are millions, if not tens of millions of people watching around the world <laughs> that are saying to themselves, hey, I, I can do that. I can create a product. I can go out and market it, whether it's in the United States or it's in Canada or in Brazil or in Hong Kong or in China. What advice would you give to those uh, men and women who are thinking about taking that big step? Because there, there's a fear, right? I mean, it is a big step. It's a huge step. And one of the most helpful things I think that I did was I found somebody who ran a business who I aspired to run a business like, a mentor, if you will. 
I contacted them and I got some advice. And even those first few small pieces of advice were super helpful. It's, a, it's really an amazing story. Congratulations again, Alicia Overby, founder of Elf, Elf, Baby Elephant Ears <laughs> for Babies. And you have to make one for adults too, by the way, yeah. next time we see you. It's a special headrest for babies, exporter of the year by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Thank you for coming on to our show. Uh, it's, it's a very, very interesting story, and uh, congratulations. Thank you for having me.